Hey guys, this is John, and I'm playing Vasilikov Evgeny in the five minute pool on ICC. This is Yevgeny Vasilikov, uh, the uh, fairly famous Russian grandmaster, and he opens with e4. Um, let's play a French defense. Uh, you can see I'm playing a five minute game. I admit defeat in three minute pool, guys. I just uh, <laughs> I haven't been doing well in the three minute pool, and I think uh, I think it might be. You know what I'm going to play here? I'm going to play knight c6. But I think it might be time to start doing just straight five minute games for the blitz category. At least that's the plan for the foreseeable future. Uh, just not playing the way I want in the three minute pool. And like, I, I can't solve the, uh, the issue of whether I should play like bullet speed or whether I should play blitz speed. It's like somewhere in the middle and it's very uncomfortable. So uh, I'm going with five minute. I think uh, you guys will probably like that actually. Let's play bishop e7 here. Um, you know, it only adds theoretically four minutes of extra time. And I think the game quality between a, a five minute game versus a three minute game is much higher uh, on the five and five minute end of the spectrum. So uh, that's the game plan. That's what we're going with. Uh, this knight c6 line is a, a relatively uh, recent line. I mean, this move has been known for a while, but uh, it has only become popular somewhat recently. And I think uh, Joe Baba is one grandmaster who plays this for black. Um, I think the French grandmaster Bauer plays this for black. I'll take my queen. I don't play it for black, but I'm trying to play it for black. So uh, we'll see what happens. It's unusual. Um, I did face this from the white side in one game in the 15 minute category. If you are curious about that, you might be able to find it. If you type in French defense on my channel search. So this guy's taking a little bit of time. Bishop here, that makes sense. So I have my queen on e7. I can try to come to b4 if I want. Pin the knight, also attack the pawn on b2. wonder how he'd react to that. I'm also attacking the bishop in that case as well. So that's kind of attractive. Hmm, let's give it a shot. We'll see what happens. This is one virtue of having the queen out on uh, e7. I'm just looking up my opponent's stats. Uh, I don't know how old Vasukov is, uh, but uh, he is a, a prominent grandmaster. Um, if you follow... Uh, chess literature and you know about Soviet chess, you will have heard his name. He castles. Okay, that makes perfect sense. I'm going to grab this pawn, I think. So he takes... He has to take on c6 now, Check. actually. Otherwise he would lose a piece, wouldn't he? And then I can grab on c3. Just trying to anticipate where he might get compensation. So maybe rook e3 is in the cards. I could play c5. Maybe that's a good idea. Just try to break up his structure before he gets going. H6 might be sensible just to keep the knight out of G5. But probably C5 is a good good move. Let's do that. Now he comes there with the rook. Okay, and we'll do this. So I wonder if knight G5, H6, queen H5 is anything that I have to be concerned about. I could always play rook F8 in that case maybe even castle in order to defend f7. For the moment, I'm just trying to consolidate my extra pawn, and I have to watch my king safety. c4, okay. Aggressive. Makes sense, though. He wants to open the position. So if I take here on d4, he takes with probably the knight, I would say. And then he's eyeing the c6 square. He might come in there. So let's say pawn takes, knight takes, maybe take on c4, but queen g4 is a possibility then. This could get sharp. I could just take on c4 as well. Might be the better thing to do. Take c4, will he push d5? I could castle then. That should be okay. Hmm. All right, I'm going to take here. I know my pawn structure isn't going to win any aesthetics awards, but uh, we'll see what happens. Maybe knight g5 is more powerful now, though, because then queen f3 was an idea, like hitting f7 and hitting that rook in the corner. I should probably take the opportunity to castle right now. I'm not going to mess around any further. My king was in the center. I postponed that decision for quite a while. I bet he plays pawn d6. 
maybe knight g5? Knight g5, I can play h6 and just see if I can entice him out of there. I can also take d5. Maybe taking d5 is decent. He takes it. The queen hits the rook. Hmm. If h6, what happens after h6? Hmm. Let's find out. I'm going to play it and see how he reacts. Plays knight e4. All right. So maybe now take d5 if he takes with the queen, bishop e6 is kind of tidy. What about knight f6? Does that scare us? No, nah, I think that's okay. Knight f6 I take. Maybe knight f6 I don't take. Maybe I play king h8. And Check. decline the offer of the knight. Because if I take uh, rook to g3 could be an issue. I thought it would be okay there, but maybe not. So if I come here instead, yeah, let's do that. Let's not capture. Granted, he could take on d5 like with the knight now, though. A little bit behind on time. He took time in the opening, but now it's coming back to bite me. If queen takes d5, hitting my rook in the corner, maybe bishop f5? Connecting the rooks and also defending along this diagonal, because he might very well try to put his queen somewhere on the b1, h7 diagonal, so as to threaten mate on the h7 square. Guess we'll see what happens. My bishop is a key defensive piece right now. Yeah, he's trying to shift his pieces over. Makes sense. But I think bishop f5 should hold everything. So if he takes here, I take. Yeah, I don't see a follow-up. I think my bishop being able to go to g6 at any moment is enough. If queen h5 right now, I have bishop g6 once again. Ooh, bishop g6, rook takes, pawn takes. He's threatening mate, eight, mate on h7. If I take there, he takes. And it's actually hard to deal with the threat of mate. Wow. Huh. Amazing. He's threatening my bishop right now, too. So maybe I have to go away with that piece somewhere. Really, bishop g6, rook takes g6, pawn takes g6, queen takes g6. I have no good defense to that. It's pretty surprising. All right, let's come here. If rook c1, I'm going to play queen d2. I have 45 seconds left, so i got to hustle. Queen g5, wow. So if I take it, rook h3, you're saying? That's a sick move. Okay, I'll come back, I guess. <laughs> I'm still not threatening to take the queen. No way. Wow. I'm just impressed by this guy's attack. Like, and he's playing it uh, very well, it seems to me. Am I just dead here? I think I'm just dead. Yeah, rook takes h6. Morning. What can I do about that? I can't do anything. Now if I take here, he takes on h6. There's no defense. Wow. All right, and I'm losing on time anyways, but I'm completely lost on the board. Huh. Yeah, he uh, he launched a blistering attack there down the stretch. Knight g5, h6, knight e4. Very nice. Queen g5 looked like a mouse slip at first but I think it's completely winning. Maybe not. Rook g8. Rook g8 was the best defense. Bishop g6, on the other hand, loses to rook h3. Ooh. Hmm. Let's go back and take a look at this. So yeah, this is one line that um, I recently came across when I uh, played from the white side in the 15-minute category. Um, knight c6. It looks awkward, right? Like putting your knight in front of the pawn. Often in the French, you want to launch your pawn up to c5, and counterattack white center. But uh, yeah, in, in this line, black can oftentimes undermine white center very quickly. So he played knight f3, I played knight f6, bishop g5. Um, yeah, there's some other lines, like white can play, for instance, bishop d3 or e5 right away. My knowledge of the theory is muddled uh, at best, I would say. But this is interesting nonetheless. So bishop e7, e5, knight e4. I knew about all this. Takes. 
And I believe bishop d3 is the main move right here. And black can even try queen b4 in this situation too. So trying to attack b2 and attack c3 a couple times. I'm not sure bishop b5 was the best decision because now queen b4 and it looks like he's forced to give up a pawn. So he castles, I take here. He must take on c6. Check. He needs to insert the Zwish and Zug because otherwise, if he simply took back, I would take on b5. I'm up a piece. So he takes Check. c6, I take back. He takes c3, I take with my queen. Yeah, rook e1, c5, this looks good. So I'm up a pawn, but um, I was worried about my king side. My king side's a bit bare. Uh, there's no pawns on uh, that wing that I can use to assist in the defense. So c4, d takes c4, looks fine so far. d5, I castled. Yeah, the computer's giving me approval to a lot of my moves. Knight g5, and this is, this is what I was worried about. I mean, as you can see, I only have my king rook and these three pawns right in front, so a traditional little king side cluster. But um, once he gets the knight and the queen working in concert against my king, and with the rook being able to swing along the third rank, it's pretty scary. And I have to be accurate here. Um, I did mention that maybe uh, maybe this decision was unwise because of the rook now being exposed on this diagonal. So I wonder if knight g5 was also playable here, threatening queen f3, among other things. Queen f3 would hit the rook and also hit f7. I guess I can get on the long diagonal in that case. Who knows, maybe I will end up castling queenside at some point here. But... Just a quick glance at the engine, it seems like it approves of my play, thus far at least. So h6, we can't tolerate that knight here for very long. I don't want the queen appearing on h5 and threatening mate on h7. So knight e4, e takes d5. Check. Yeah, then he did this. I think I was correct not to capture. So if I take rook g3 check, check king h8. Yeah, this just looks scary in the moment, but maybe it's fine. King h7, there's no mate here. My bishop importantly, controls the uh, h3 square, so he can't swing his rook over to pile up on this pawn. What if just take here, though? Queen d2? Yeah, because this threatens uh, rook g7 check, king uh, h8, queen takes h6 mate. Yeah, I, I don't think I should stumble into this. So, I played king h8. Interesting that the computer still gives minus 2 in my favor. Rook g3, good move. I mean, once he's sunk the knight into f6, it uh, behooves him to continue attacking. It doesn't seem like he would want to play knight takes d5 and just switch over to trying to gain some material back. As you can see, I'm up three pawns at this point. But uh, he has the initiative, and um, to go and pick off one of the pawns would be exactly what black wants. You know, if he does something like this, I can bring my bishop out, maybe pin him with rook d8. And uh, as you can see, the evaluation is uh, winning for black. He needs to continue attacking to compensate for the material deficit. Yeah, and I just found this position to be a difficult one to defend with limited time. Bishop f5, still a good move. Queen h5. So this was, this was the first moment where I started thinking that something was seriously wrong, because bishop g6 would be the normal move, just attacking his queen and covering the g-file, but he can take. And then after I take, queen takes, he's threatening queen h7 mate, supported by the knight. So I got to eliminate his knight. Ah, I can take with a rook. I only thought about taking with a pawn. And I just saw some line like this where he's threatening queen g7 mate. And if I cover it with this, I get made it this mate. way. My flight square has been taken away. Maybe this is somehow playable for me. If I play rook takes f6, pawn takes f6, rook g8. It still looks scary though. I mean, at the check. very least he can take and then take this pawn with check. And now he's not even, uh, well, I guess he'll be down one pawn. Check. But uh, my king is completely open. He can probably go get this pawn, too, if he wants. Hmm. Well, as I've said before in videos, if you can't play like a natural move, especially when you're on the defensive, if you can't play the natural defensive move, like bishop g6 in this case, uh, it, it's a cause for concern. And my bishop is under attack. So I just fled with it to c2. Maybe that was the wrong square. The computer says bishop e6 is better. It just looks so scary. I mean, he's got all these pieces loaded up against uh, g7 and h6. But yeah, I don't see a direct way for him to break through. I mean, this sacrifice never really does anything. I can take, he doesn't have a follow-up check because I cover these squares. Moreover, queen takes h6 check. does not work. 
It'd be nice to pull this okay. off, but of course I have a rook here to cover. Yeah, so maybe this is fine. Maybe this is okay. Um, I just naturally wanted to stay on this diagonal because I was worried his queen would somehow get on that diagonal and threaten mate on h7, so I played this. But he played a brilliant move here. This is like a double x clam move, queen g5. And he played that in five seconds, too. That's uh, that's Grandmaster experience right there. That's that's a guy who's played many a uh, brilliant attack in his career. And as I recall, Vasukov is uh, a famous uh, attacking Grandmaster. I think he was known for his um, attacking games. So... Bravo to Mr. Vasukov. I think that's an excellent move, queen g5. Like I said, it looked like a mouse slip at first. I mean, so the main point is, if I take, then rook Check. h3, and it's mate next move. I have to block with my bishop. Rook takes h7, mate. mate. I can't go to g8. So, again, I played what I thought to be a natural move, bishop g6, but I guess here, rook g8 is my only chance. Trying to give an exchange to... Um, Attempt a defense, basically. Yeah, because now, now I can see this maybe being defensible for me. Although still, what happens in this case? Bishop h7, if he sacks, take here. I guess I have rook g7 at the end of this line. Yeah, defending h7. Okay, so I have to find a very specific defense. Rook g8 instead of the more natural looking bishop g6. After this, yeah, I cannot prevent rook takes h6. And I don't have enough on the g file to defend like a, a bishop that might end up there. Now if I play bishop h7, it's not going to work. He takes, threatening mate once again. Um, if I take here, queen takes, and I have no way to defend h7. Look at my queen, it's way over on the queen side. It can't get to a light square to help out. If I could play queen from a5 to c2 right now, that would be helpful, but I can't. Huh, very nice. My best move is queen d2. That's equivalent to resignation, giving up my queen. <laughs> yeah, not much more to be said. I think I played a lot of good defensive moves uh, leading up to this, but um, he played one more good attacking move than I had a, an answer for. I had to find rook g8. That was the only chance. And if this happens, well, then I'm completely, well, I guess I could even take his queen. Yeah, I don't even have to take the knight. I can just take the queen. So rook g8, move 21, was needed. But um, very well played by my opponent. Bravo. So uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, I'll be back tomorrow with another video. Talk to you guys later. Bye.